Welcome to Temple of Praise Online Service. This is Jesus in my home, Jim H for short. And this is where we meet in our small groups. As we um, meet today to discuss God's word, I pray that you are present and join us in our small groups and you benefit from us. Let us pray. Father Lord, I just want to thank you for today and I just want to thank you for being with us. As we come together to worship, learn more about you, fellowship with each other, ask that you be in our midst. I pray for hearts that are open to receive your word. I pray that you will take all our cares away and we'll be completely focused and totally ready to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let your kingdom come here Let your will be done Stand 
water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine No Offerings we give because we love God. Fights we give 
in obedience to God's word. Okay, um, giving will be obviously online, so uh, the details for giving by text message will appear on the screens now, um, also by bank transfer as well. Okay, please use those, those details um, as you wish. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give. Thank you, Lord, because we um, we know it's an opportunity and we, we are grateful for it, oh God. Thank you because out of the abundance that you've given us, we've um, come with this token, oh God. We ask that you bless it, oh God, in Jesus' name. We also ask, oh God, that you please rebuke the devourer for our sakes, oh God, in Jesus' this name. This is Lord, Temple pray. of Praise UK Online, a transformational church based in the heart of Liverpool. You're joining us today in Jesus Chapel, based in Liverpool Lighthouse Creative Sanctuary in Anfield. And wherever you're joining us from, welcome. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hello. It's wonderful to be with you again today as we come together to explore God's word. We call it Bible Conversation. Because we want to encourage um, you to, to talk about the Bible, to talk through the Word of God with other people. And um, it's the period of Lent and it's a time when, when many are fasting across churches all over the world. And they're fasting and praying. And maybe some are not fasting, just praying. But, but, but we're going to explore today those two things coming together, fasting and praying. Is it important? Is it advisable? Is there any value in fasting when we when we pray? And uh, so I've got two people with me today to help us out and bring insight and wisdom into our discussion today. The first person is Evangelist Alfie. Alfie Levin. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We we hope um, we're quite excited to hear what you will say for us. And the second person is, again, a, a member of our leadership team, uh, Brother Graham Roberts. Welcome. Thank you. Excellent. So we're going to go straight into God's Word, into the Bible. We're, I'm going to start from Exodus chapter 34. And the first account is the account of Moses. Okay. And it says in verse 27, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words. I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the commandment, the Ten Commandments. So here was Moses, our first example, he was with God for 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. By the way, bread means food. Okay. All right, the second passage. Um, Graham is going to tell us that passage and then read to us. Yeah. So the second passage is Daniel 10, verse 2 and 3. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all, so three whole weeks were fulfilled. And uh, three weeks was 20, 21 days. days. Excellent. Okay. And it, it said, uh, just to make that clear, it said, no. Pleasant food. No pleasant food. No meat. No meat. No, no wine. No wine. And no. Nor did I anoint myself. Okay. So three things he he denied himself of. What the first one was food, isn't it? Yeah. Pleasant food. Pleasant food. And the second one was no meat. Meat or just to amplify it that no meat or because you see Daniel was used to eating vegetables isn't it in Daniel chapter 1 in his appointing uh, he uh, you know there were there was a test for them the king had said they should you know look after themselves and and so that they would be wise and so on and so Daniel had to 
said he was going to just eat uh, vegetables. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is the reference. So just to show that it wasn't just the vegetables he denied himself of, it just said the um, meat and also drink as well. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now, okay. Your, your, your okay, so the um, third passage is taken from nine. Now it's a long um, account. It's from, if you want to go and read it, it's from 17 to, um, to say 29. I'm so, just going to pick sorry, out. What, what book? Okay. Mark 9. Mark 9. Yeah. Oh. From 17 to 29. But I'm just going to pick out a few of the verses. So Jesus was passing by. A man in the crowd brought to him his son who was possessed by um, a spirit that robbed him of his speech. Now, this spirit would throw him into the fire and try to kill him. Um, we read on that it would, um, you know, uh, cut him. And um, so he, he asked Jesus, please, can you heal, help my son? And Jesus went on to say, um, if you believe, everything is possible. But then he said, well, your disciples tried to you know set him free but they couldn't do it and so jesus said bring the boy to me and the story goes on you know jesus commanded the spirit to come out it came out of him he took the boy by the hand and raised him up and the boy was delivered so it's a good passage do read it but then the disciples were standing there and they were thinking well we tried that and it didn't work what what and so privately they took Jesus aside and they asked him in verse 28, why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. Now some translations say only by prayer and fasting. So. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so that in that passage, uh, the Lord Jesus endorsed, isn't it, fasting yeah. with praying as well. Yeah. Um, I wonder why some translations left out the fasting bit, because it is key. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we remember as Christians that the Lord Jesus, um, at, at the age of um, 30, coming into his ministry, what did he do? He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He right. went into the desert after, the after baptism, being baptized. Right. Yeah. So the Lord Jesus would not say to somebody, don't fast, because yeah. himself, yeah. right at the start of his ministry, he, he fasted. fasted. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. And that was no water, no food. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That is a tough one. So we, yeah. we've read about two people now that did 40, isn't it? You had Moses. And then you had the Lord Jesus. Yeah. And then in between you had Daniel, Daniel, did 21 Daniel who did days. 21. Yeah. So it shows that fasting can vary in length, isn't it? Uh, and in the New Testament, just to say that in the New Testament you'll find several references to fasting uh, and praying. Um, the Paul in, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 13 verse 2, you'll find that there, um, Paul um, talking about fasting after we fasted, and in chapter 14 verse 23, these are references in the, of Paul's experiences with different churches and fasting and praying. So, um, if somebody says to you, don't fast, what would you say to them? Jesus did it, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, great. All right, we will come to that. So I suppose that takes us to the first question. In this passage, we know that all Christians should pray. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So why was it that fasting was mentioned along with the praying in these passages? Well, I think if you want to get results, 
if you're really seeking God about something and you want breakthrough, mm -hmm. adding fasting to it, this guy, this boy needed to be delivered from it in the evil spirit. And, and Jesus himself said it can only come out through prayer and fasting. Now, there's some situations in some lives that are really critical or crucial or heavy on their hearts. Adding fasting to praying puts you in the right mindset to make a big difference yeah. to the prayer. So okay, what of, okay yeah. well, what of what of Moses? Why 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 was Moses fasting? Um while he was stuck on a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> no food. <laughs> there was no food. What was he doing on the mountain by the way? He kept the Ten Commandments. Well from God. From so God. he was so with God's God. presence. And um, if you look at each one of them as well, I think there's um there's a point why they're doing it. Why did why are they actually doing it? Um, so. so why why were they doing it? And Moses was getting that ten commandments. Ten minutes. So yeah. that was that was a purpose. That's yeah, what you're yeah, saying, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. You don't just fast for the fun of yeah. it. No. Uh, you have to have a purpose yeah. Yeah, um, for fasting. Right. And Daniel was petitioning okay. and, and seeking the Lord on so the situation that okay. was facing. Again. So he, he wanted to be serious, like you said, isn't he? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Excellent. So now, of course, we know that there are many benefits to fasting. There are many reasons why we fast. Okay. Um, just for, for we're just going to, to mention some of them. Um, the obvious and the physical way of humbling ourselves. Fasting, if you look at Psalm 33, at Psalm 35, verse 13, if, if one of us just opens to that quickly, Psalm 35, verse 13, okay, and, and if you open to Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah 58, verses 3 to 6, Okay, and you'll find that there are some key things that, that tell us uh, the posture for fasting because these are important. What 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 fasting is about? Yeah. Okay. So, when you want to read yeah. to us, thirty-five, thirteen. Well, as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself and fought with fasting, and my prayer was returned to my own heart. I humbled myself with fasting. fasting. I humbled myself with fasting. fasting. So that means that fasting is a way of humbling ourselves. So that in coming before God, you know, nowadays, I don't know, there are not many postures we, we take in coming before God. Oh God, are you there? <laughs> anyway, if, if you're there, well, you better answer my prayer, you know. There is no humility. And, you know. and so fasting is when you are fasting and the tongue is crumbling, you you do what? Get on you, your knees. You go <laughs> on your knees, you humble yourself. Yeah. So fasting is a key thing to humbling us before God. Before God. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 from verse 3. Yeah. Why have we fasted, they say? Mm -hmm. And you have not seen it. Mm. Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Okay. So you, you can see the linking between humility and humbling. Yeah. Lord, we fasted. You haven't heard us. We've been humbling ourselves and you haven't done anything. <laughs> you know. So these so humility is a key part of mm. what happens to us. That whole process of fasting is a way of humbling ourselves. So, I will really agree with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. It's, it's okay. Yeah. The other one is, uh, of course, in humbling him, mm. it means we lift him up, oh, isn't yeah. it? So, so they, they act the same way. Um, surrendering to him as a key. Verse six. Read the verse six for that Isaiah fifty-eight. The verse six. So verse six says, "Is not this the kind of fasting?" I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressors free and break every yoke. Okay, 
So it's important. So that in times of, of fasting, there is a focus there, the type of fasting God wants, mm -hmm. which is to look beyond ourselves. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. You see, when you're fasting properly, you're off, first of all lifting up God, isn't it? Humbling yeah. yourself. But then there is this third part of fasting, not just to focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. so, mm. The type of fasting God wants is one that looks beyond. Yeah. So as I said, we're just exploring what fasting really mm. is. Okay. Now, the, the other thing is that we read in that passage that was read earlier from Mark's Gospel chapter 9. <coughs> Would you agree with me? I mean, what happened? The Lord Jesus said, this type can only be done by fasting and prayer. Right. What, what, what can only be done by fasting and prayer? Well, in this instance, it was to drive out the evil spirit. Okay. So you needed more of God's power, more focus on yeah. God to, yeah. to, to face the devil and cast him out. So. <laughs> you needed to have access yeah. to the divine power. The divine power. Yeah. So there is something when we're fasting along with prayer that opens up the, uh, the God's spirit and manifestations even through us. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. It's not just um, fasting and beating up the devil or casting it out. It, it's about that access yeah. to divine power. Yeah. Great. It's sort of like putting your armor on, isn't it? When you come to face a situation, and you put, you know, your your arm with God's spirit. You know, you're in tune in your I mean, mind. Yeah, I think yeah. your mindset is totally different yeah. isn't it, to your normal day when you're fasting and praying. Sorry, what were you saying again? When you're fasting and praying, your mindset's totally different. Uh, yes. yes. Is your mind like if you're hungry, your belly starts rumbling at you. Your mind tells you that it's time for something to eat, but you know you're denying yourself, as we were saying before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, and, and the people want will also obviously want to see your your you talking to them as well. So it's very important that we okay. So so it's important that we fast, isn't it? Because yeah. Like you said, the, the tummy is crying out and, and everything else happening, but the spirit is then high and, and, and reaching out to God. Okay. Daniel 9, verse 3. Daniel 9, verse 3. In, in verse 3, it says, um, let's just see. Daniel 9, verse 3. Uh, yes, yes, please, yes. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests and by prayer and supplications and fasting, sackcloth and ashes. Okay, so you can see that Daniel, he wasn't just once, he fasted, <laughs> you know. So here he was. So would you say that fasting enforces our petition? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do, do you do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah. Enforcing it. Yeah. That you you're putting That's everything you. in <laughs> your own personal suffering, your own denying of yourself. You know, you're putting more than just talk. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's but, right, isn't it? Would you say it gets God's attention? God always gets attention, <laughs> okay. but but it just well, shows him we're serious. Yeah. It, shows him we're serious. Yeah. it shows him we're serious. It shows him we're serious enough to to get results. It shows we are serious enough to results come from him. Yeah. Okay. But as is to show him, Lord, I am serious about this matter. Yeah. Again, I need to say that. Yeah. Because some think it is our fasting that gets results. It is not. It is God that gives the answer. Yeah. Yeah. It's the expectation though. You have to go into it with expectation. Yes. That God is going to answer and there's going to be a breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, just be warned. It is not everything we fast for that gives us what we want. And there's an example in the Bible. King David did something he shouldn't have done. 
And the result was a baby. And the baby, God said through the prophet that this baby is going to die. And you know what King David did? He went into the temple with um, sackcloth and ashes and he began to fast and pray. And he would not eat. He was fasting and crying out to God. And then the, the, the servants were, were um, worried. And then the boy, the boy died. And then the servants were worried to go and tell him. And, but then we, we told that they, they went and told him and he just spruced up anyway. As the food and ate. Because you see, he, he was not trusting in his fasting and praying. He was trusting in God who is the answer. So again, be careful when we are fasting and praying. It is not our fasting and praying that gives us the answer. It is always God that does. So it's a plea to God, our fasting and praying. Okay. But we should do it like he said. Absolutely believe. Expecting the answer. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so it is there are many, many things, and you'll see that Elijah fasted and, and he sought God and, and in, in his in God's strength. And so many in the Bible um, have this experience with God and they enjoyed victory. Um, it's a weapon. Fasting is an added weapon in the warfare. It's part of the weapons we use. Okay, so I'm gonna. We're now going to go into. We've talked about some of the benefits. That these are some of the benefits. It humbles us. It's a. It's, it's a weapon we use. It brings us closer to God. It focuses our minds. And what are the other benefits we've looked at? It gives us the the divine power. Access to divine powers. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it strengthens our relationship with, with God, God as well. I absolutely. Think, yeah. That is so key. That it is a way that we... What do you mean by that? Strengthens our relationship with God. Well, when you're fasting, you're denying yourself. And you're more in tune, more... You will hear God more. You'll, you'll feel more. His presence more. Yeah, you'll absolutely. read His word Amen. more. And all this brings you closer Close to God. God. Fantastic. So, should we fast? Now, by the way, there was a question that was asked of the Lord Jesus. We're coming to the end of it. There was a question asked that, that in, Matthew, um, in, in Matthew's Gospel, when, when they asked him, um, I think it was the disciples of, uh, of, um, of John, they said, your, your disciples don't fast. We, John's disciples, we fast, and the Pharisees, we fast, but your disciples don't. And Jesus said to them, yeah, but they've still got me here. But when I'm not here, they're going to fast. So the question is this. We as Christians, does God want us to fast? And I really mean that question. Is it good for us, God's will for us, to add fasting to our prayer? Yeah, definitely. So yes. <laughs> You're thinking about it. No, I definitely think it's um, it's definitely a, a, a tool or power that we can connect with God. Um, so to deny yourself, you lift and God up, you being humble and things. Mm. Thank you. And now, what do you think? And he most certainly wants us to fast because there's lots he wants to show us, Wonderful. speak to us, he wants us to grow. Um, yeah, so example. One example. One example. Yes. One example was um, I um, split up with my wife at the time. I was back on my mum's um, and I, I just felt like as if it was God saying to me, what I want you to do is fast and pray. Take your ring off every night and put it on the Bible. And I've done that for, um, I think it was two weeks. Wow. Fast and, and pray. And honestly, even when, when I ended up back with my wife, but then, um, even my wife was saying there was no way she went to Tony because I got a word of God saying so that he got him. I know that was going to happen to the world. Wonderful. So that's a powerful 
uh, testimony. Thanks for sharing that. Do you want to share any example of your I practice? actually can't think of one, but yeah, that, that's petition and that's really mm -hmm. seeking God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's brilliant. Amen. Amen. So there are many times when we fast and, uh, and it really we see the answers. Um, a, a quick one for me, I, I was, I, I had been uh, suffering from a stomach problem that I could, I, I had to eat every two hours. And, and so I went to the hospital, which I don't normally do, and, and um, they checked me up and they couldn't decipher what was happening. And so they then booked me in to come back for, uh, just so they would put something in my, in my throat and, and check my tummy and, and, and I knew that, and then we were coming up to start our period of fasting and praying, which would go on over 40 days. And so, uh, and, and I was thinking, oh no Lord, but, but I, I've got to eat something every two hours, because if I didn't eat, I was in pain. I was in serious pain. And so it was a question, of, and so the, the hospital had booked for me to come back for an appointment. And, and so, I, I, so it was a decision, do I start the fasting and go in into the 40 days and lead God's people, or do I um, go to the hospital? Do I keep eating? And so, of course, I chose the, the, the first one, and, and I just got healed from it. I can't even remember praying for it. From day one, the pain never came back until through the fasting, and it never came back. And that was, some, was about 20 years ago. You know, so that's what happened. Yeah. It was an experience I had. Today, till today, I never knew, I don't know what happened in my stomach, but it didn't matter because God healed me. That, uh, there's been many um, times I've fasted and God's come through, but this what you just reminded me of one, can I just share yes, it? Yes. So after coming back from Pakistan in 2010 yes. or something like that, I came back with dengue, got bitten to death by mosquitoes and came back with the disease, dengue. Now I was vomiting everywhere, was isolated in the hospital, they didn't know what was going on. So Eventually, this was dengue fever? Dengue, yeah, dengue fever. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the doctor said, uh, so this was November, really ill all over, you know, all that, over that period, and November, December, January, February. And they said, well, look, you know, you just got to ride it out. You know, dengue lasts for 10 years. So, you know, there's not much we can do. It's a 10 year ride. And we were coming into our Lent fast period. And, you know, I was being prayed for, and it was the fasting period. And, you know, I was doing the fasting myself. And at the end of the, we had an intense seven days, which we always have at the end of this 40 days. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that, I was totally free from dengue. Never, never even affected my body, all the weakness and sickness. It was like, just gone. Amen. Gone. Amen. So those are three examples of, yeah. of God's miracles as we trusted him as we spend time fasting and prayer. Thank you very much, folks. What we want you to do is to explore these questions. So three, same three questions for you. Read those passages that we have mentioned and the account of Moses and the account of Daniel and also the, the, uh, the disciples, the experience that they encountered um, with, with the Lord Jesus. There are several other fasting passages in the Bible. What we encourage you, get on board. Get with us in this in praying. Get serious with God. Let's humble ourselves together. Let's seek the face of God together and share this. As Thank you very much for joining our service today. I hope you have had a good time and I pray that everything that you've learned today is just not going to be for right now, but you will use it throughout the week and the month. And I pray that you are blessed today and enjoy the rest of your week. Let us share the grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.